You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This is an episode about entrepreneurship, and I want to talk about the most important entrepreneurial skill or mindset or approach that everyone really needs, I I believe, uh, to do entrepreneurship. And uh, this is sometimes referred to by the acronym JFDI. Uh, In other words, just fucking do it. I want to talk about this because I know that a lot of people really, really have trouble with this and really struggle with this, with just doing it, with actually getting on with entrepreneurship and making all the decisions that have to be made and plunging in to the exciting, exhilarating and scary ride that it is. And this comes through in in a number of ways, you know, in some of the questions that I get about entrepreneurship, like um, how do I know if the timing is right and to start my business and I'm, I'm not sure what business to go into and I'm not quite sure what to do and I don't know how to um, develop this idea and, and so forth. I mean, these are all uh, questions that there are important specific things to talk about in any particular industry, but I think one of the key things um, that this all plugs into is is the question of how to overcome uh, the paralysis and the indecision and the procrastination that you have to overcome uh, in order to to make anything uh, creative like entrepreneurship. So I wanted to talk about my own experience with this and some thoughts I have about how you can just fucking do it. You know, what what it is that you can do um, to to really get into that mindset. Uh, Because I believe that everyone can get into that mindset. Um, So I'll share with you some of my experiences and some thoughts I have. First of all, though, I wanted to address, before getting into it, I wanted to really address the question of should you just do it? Should you be doing entrepreneurship? Uh, Because, you know, there are legitimate concerns about whether or not to jump in. I mean, for example, I think entrepreneurship is such a huge commitment that if you have other major commitments, then it's, it is an important question as to whether or not this is something that you should be doing uh, at this time. So, I mean, just as a kind of checklist, um, are you about to get married? Uh, that's a pretty big commitment that is going to take, uh, you know, a lot of your mental space and, and is important to do properly and, and so forth. Are you about to have kids? That is a major, major commitment that needs your full attention and so forth. Um, And trying to start a business at the same time is is going to be hugely challenging. What about your personal life? You know, are you are you reassessing your relationships? Are you going through major changes? You know, do you have family uh, conflicts that are really uh, you need to come to some kind of uh, resolution over? Are you going through a breakup? Um, Are you dealing with important personal commitments? Those are things, again, that it's going to make it really difficult for you to uh, really devote yourself and jump in. Are you struggling with something like addiction or some other, you know, really important challenge that you need to maybe go through therapy and address and and kind of sort out? Those, Those, I think, are things that would make it very hard to be an entrepreneur. And I have talked about debt in previous podcasts. You know, are you under a lot of debt? Have you got a lot of credit card debt? These are things that are going to really be a drag on you and that you know, it would make sense to me to address first before jumping in. So it, if you are struggling with all those things, you can still get a lot of freedom in your life. You can still be a freelancer. You can still you know, work for yourself, do some kind of unjobbing thing. But it, we're really talking about founding a business here, you know, going for it in terms of building uh, a venture that you're going to have employees, you're going to try and change the world with. And so that's just a checklist for you to 
um, to run through. I bet for most of the people listening to this podcast, most of those things don't apply. I, I mean, I bet all of them don't apply to you for the majority of people listening to this. And I bet really the question is more psychological than those objective things that you that you really need to to take care of first. Because with regard to the things that you f- may feel that you need to prepare for entrepreneurship and, and get ready for, the fact is that when you get started with a business, you have no control over the opportunity flow. And you can prepare as much as you like, but it will be totally different as soon as you get started. So in general... I believe that uh, the sooner the better to get started with entrepreneurship, particularly because the older you get, the more commitments that you're going to have in terms of having kids and starting a family and and things like that. So if you can do entrepreneurship when you have no real responsibilities, when you haven't taken on any other major financial commitments, all the better. And therefore, the sooner you can, get started the better i would say get a handle on your debts as quickly as possible get out of debt if you can and just get going so when you do want to get going how is it possible to overcome the analysis paralysis you know the indecision the procrastination um and and be able to make decisions as quickly as you're going to have to make decisions uh, in business. And this definitely was something that I struggled with. I'm not um, a very decisive person by nature. Um, I like to keep my options open. I, I'm always interested in other possibilities and so forth. And one of the aspects of entrepreneurship that's really challenging, or was for me, is you just have to make decisions all day long. Um, so I've thought about some of the ways in which I found it helpful to think about this, uh, which might be useful for you. And for me, it really comes down to giving yourself permission in a number of different ways. For example, it was absolutely critical for me to give myself permission to fail. If you're going to start a business, it's a really important thing to be aware that you may not succeed. Um, This might be one big giant failure. And the question is, Um, do you have permission to fail? Is that an option for you? Is that something that you can even contemplate? Because if you're not willing to even contemplate it, you'll never get started. And for me, I started a business when I was 27 and I thought to myself, I'm going to do this for five years and I really want to go for it and I want to make this a big success and to eventually sell my company and move on. Uh, And if after five years I haven't achieved that, then I can go and get a jobby job and I'll have a great experience of having tried to do that and it doesn't matter. And I mean, in the end, it took me 10 years. So I was never very good at maths, but it ultimately uh, I did achieve what I wanted to achieve. And after five years, I could see the direction that that was going. So, you know, I felt good uh, in terms of, of carrying on. And so, you know, that I think is a really key thing is, are you willing to give yourself permission to fail? Because ultimately, the people who really matter are going to respect you so much more for having gone for it and really tried and, you know, thrown all your passion behind this project. Even if you then discover that, you know, you, you, the market wasn't right uh, or you, you have miscalculated the opportunity or whatever, you're going to get so much experience in doing that. And people will really respect that much more than they will respect you if you never really tried, you never followed your dream. And you will respect yourself much more if you throw yourself in and do it than if you never followed your dream. So that's the first thing, I think, is giving yourself permission to fail. The second thing that comes to mind for me is permission to be imperfect. I mean, this is something that really holds people back in in starting a business because they say to themselves, well, I will start, but I just need to get this right and that right. And I'm going to get my logo and I'm going to website. It's going to be perfect. It's going to be beautiful. And I'm, I'm not ready um, because it's not, you know, I don't want to make a bad impression and it's not right to launch yet. And that state of mind can go on for years, years and years. And the best 
quote I ever heard about this was by Reid Hoffman, the founder of LinkedIn. And he said, if version 1.0 isn't embarrassing to you, then you're launching too late. So in other words, if you're, well, when you start your business, you know, if you're not feeling a little bit embarrassed about some aspects of it, then you've left it too long. Um, and I, f- I find that a really empowering way of looking at it because what he's saying is, you know, it's always going to be not quite right. There's always going to be things that you think you could improve um, about what it is that you're doing. It's always going to be imperfect. And that is OK. That doesn't matter because the most important thing is just fucking do it. Just get launched and get going. Start the new product, start the business, whatever it is that you want to do. And give yourself permission to be imperfect. And I know what the temptation uh, here is. It's the, the temptation is to wait until what it is that you're doing is completely unassailable to criticism. So, you know, the temptation is to think, I'm going to make this so damn good that nobody is going to be able to criticize what I'm doing. But, of course, when you think about it, of course, you're always going to have people criticizing what you're doing. And haters are going to hate. And there's nothing you can really do about that. So that is um, an unachievable goal. You've got to give yourself permission to be imperfect. Uh, When I started, I didn't really even have a proper business plan. I had something that I called a business plan, but it was certainly not a business plan. I couldn't even really read accounts. You know, I I had to keep looking things up. I still have to look up um, accounting terms uh, these days. You know, it's even after 10 years of doing business. Um, But yeah, when I started, I I couldn't read accounts. I had no proper business plan. I couldn't even properly describe the service that we were providing because we were confused about what we were doing. We thought we were going to provide an online uh, application service provision model and uh, yada, yada, yada. We didn't realize we were in a consulting business. And... But still, the point is, uh, we started. We put our stall out and we made contact with the marketplace. And that is the best teacher of all. And that's how we learned what we were doing. Through the embarrassment of starting imperfect and realizing, oh, this, is, this needs changing and that needs changing and so forth. We actually found, found out you know, what we became, what we were supposed to be by actually trying to do it. So... Permission to be imperfect. Very, very important, I think. The next thing I think uh, is, is really important to, in order to be able to just fucking do it, is to give yourself permission to piss people off. And this is really, unfortunately, really, really important in business. Um, you know, every transition that I have made uh, in business has pissed some people off. And every time you try and change the world in any significant way, um, you will piss people off. I don't mean give yourself a license to do um, anything unprincipled or, or anything like that. But the fact of the matter is, when you start a business, you will piss off the competition who won't want you to uh, come into their, their marketplace. And you know you may piss off a whole bunch of other people too. Um, In my own case, uh, I was at a university doing a PhD and uh, learning about all of this, um, these uh, computer technology and techniques. And I had an opportunity to stay within the the little consulting unit at the university that the professors had set up. But I wanted to do it properly, in my view. I wanted to be a real company out in the marketplace with no kind of university aspirations. And I wanted to do it my way. I wanted to, to have my own business. And so I wanted to take everything I learned that was all public knowledge about uh, these uh, tools and techniques and start a company with it. And, you know, that really pissed off the professors in the university who wanted me to stay there and who didn't want me to go and compete with them in the marketplace. And, you know, that's, that's understandable. Now, even though I didn't take any of their clients and even though there was nothing ethically wrong with competing on the free market, it still seriously pissed them off. And if I hadn't been willing to piss anyone off, then I wouldn't have been able to start my business. Uh, So that's something that you definitely have to give yourself permission for. Now, I'm sure that some other people are better at this than me. I mean, I'm sure there are people who 
are, are better at um, diplomacy and at people relationships. And, you know, it, it may well be that um, I could have avoided um, pissing a lot of people off in various ways if I'd handled things better. I'm, I'm sure that's the case. Um, so maybe you will be a lot better at it than me. In terms of uh, minimizing the amount of uh, people that you piss off when you, you start a business, but even if you're a lot better at it than me, I still truly believe that you're going to have to give yourself permission to piss some people off. Because if you don't, then it will hold you back. Of course, you have to do it within your own ethics and within your own principles. But nonetheless, you still have to give yourself permission uh, to piss other people off. If it's between that and not launching and not doing what it is that you truly believe in. The last thing I think that comes to mind for me about getting into that mindset where you just fucking do it um, is giving yourself permission to succeed. And this is a really, really important one, which I think a lot of people struggle with. And it's something that actually was a, was a big deal for me um, to admit to myself that I wanted to succeed, that I wanted financial independence, financial freedom. I wanted to make my fortune and be able to go on and do whatever I wanted with my life. And to be able to get into that mindset with yourself where rather than saying, ah, oh, you know, I'm going to try this out. I'm going to see how it goes. I'm going to maybe do a business, um, just test the waters, see what's happening. No, fuck that. I really want this. I really want to make, make a success out of it. And I am absolutely going to throw myself at this and make it happen. It still might not work in the end, but I am completely committed to doing my absolute best to make this work. That is um, a vulnerable thing to admit to yourself um, that you are that you actually want to succeed. And it also often um, puts you up against a lot of conditioning to that you will have undergone in the school and with your family and so forth to fit in, to be um, acceptable, to be part of the crowd and so forth. You will bump up against that uh, internally as well. And I really believe that it's, it's really important to give yourself permission to succeed as well as permission to fail. So those are just some thoughts that I had about um, how to just fucking do it, JFDI. I hope that's useful to you and I really wish you all the best and just fucking do it. Thank you for listening to The Voluntary Life. If you have feedback about the show, please email jake at thevoluntarylife.com. If you enjoyed this program, please share the podcast with your friends or click the donate button on thevoluntarylife.com.